Welcome back to Zakima's Ridge Homestead and Happy New Year 2020. I'm going to go out today and do a little bit of work outside. So come along, let's get some stuff done. Hello, and welcome to our channel. We're, We're glad, glad you're, you're here. here. Well, here we are, New Year's Day. It's, uh, weather's not too bad. As you can see and probably hear me walking here, there's a crust of snow and ice on the ground, but it's, it's relatively warm today, probably in the 40s. The, uh, the ground, as you can see here in front of the garage, pretty muddy. We've had quite a bit of rain previous to this little bit of snow we got, so some puddles over here and just, just mud everywhere. But I thought today would be a good day to clean out the chicken coop. I've already got that done. I thought I'd take you back here and show you what we got going. Use the uh, use the tractor. Makes it pretty pretty convenient. Got the sheep over here next to the chickens. There's all the chickens still locked out. I think we're down to 11 chickens and one rooster. That's the rooster right up front here. The rest are all the laying hens. We had about double that amount a month or so ago and, and something killed about half of them again. Sometimes we open this, this door here and let them out in the yard, but hate to risk it right now because we're getting them killed so fast. Not sure if it's fox or a hawk or coyotes or what. We do hear coyotes out back in the woods in the evenings, so it could definitely be coyote coming up here. We have seen fox in the past, and of course there's been a lot of hawks. So something's taking the chickens, and we're, we're playing it safe right now and just keeping them locked up. Got the door closed there because I cleaned the coop out. Here's what we got. There is a whole bucket full of chicken waste. <clears throat> That's uh, mostly mud from them dragging it in from outside. Obviously their waste, you see some feathers in there, and the wood chips that we use. Here's our little chicken coop. Got our access to our eggs. There's four accesses there with two laying boxes on each side. They only ever use the top two. We haven't got an, ever got an egg out of this bottom one. And before we had a few of the other chickens killed, we used to get an egg or two down here. But most of they use the top laying boxes. Do have electric out here. There's a timer in there that uh, you probably see through the crack in the door, the light inside. We do keep a light on 16 hours a day. That just turns it on and off. And there's also power coming up through here. It's kind of messy with extension cords right now, but that outlet box up there has got uh, like a night light here. It's one of those uh, candles with the photo eye on it. So we get that little, little porch light at night. And the yellow cord goes down inside for their heated bowl. And this blue and black cord is running over for the sheep's water heater over there. So what I do when I clean, I just use a uh, an old drywall knife and a five gallon bucket. Basically just go around on the inside and scrape everything up into the bucket, dump it in the bucket on the tractor. The feeder hangs there, it's a seven pound feeder. We keep the layer feed in there for them. Got these old rabbit feeders. Uh, one of them is full of the oyster shell, and the other one is usually full of the uh, the granite grit for them. Right now, they've kind of kind of rotted out. There's screen underneath in the back, and over the years, it's kind of rotted out. So we're out of the grit at the moment, but they do have they do have some oyster shell in here. Come on inside. There's the waterer, all plugged in. There's the four laying boxes on this side. Like I said, they only use these top two. And there's the four laying boxes on the other side. Again, only the top two. So we'll go ahead and open the door here. And let them back in. They've been locked out there for a little while. We've got mud. So they'll probably work their way back in here shortly. So I've had this chicken coop for years. Uh, it's got a plywood floor under it. It sits up off the ground. Got a roost bar there and a roost bar there. They do roost up here on these two rafter beams. And there's also two, two roosts here in that uh, bump out window. Right now we've got uh, plexiglass on that screen to keep it warmer in the winter. There, I believe there might be screen here, but I didn't have enough plexi. So we just keep that piece of OSB there. That's where the cord comes in for their water. 
then their window in the door has also got plexi on it and this side here's got plexi and I was correct there is also a screen on this in the summertime we'll take the wood and the uh, plexiglass off for ventilation and we've always got this top piece open up here for ventilation even in the winter so it doesn't get a moisture issue but that's our chicken coop and uh, like I said we got it all cleaned out we use the wood chips we buy at the farm store for the floor and it's been a while since we cleaned it out I noticed when the uh, temperature started coming <clears throat> coming up here we were getting some of the ammonia odor so I knew it was time to get it changed so we'll take this bucket full and we'll go spread it in the garden I figure before we go spread that I'll show you a little bit better here on the outside chicken coops there it's got a 10 by 10 dog pen around it uh, we've got old railroad ties around the bottom and also um, old metal pool siding that comes out to out to here and you can't see it because of the mud but it sticks underneath inside a little bit as well that way nothing could dig underneath the fence and get the chickens but the same thing over here where the sheep are at this building is kind of an all-purpose building the sheep are in there now originally we had uh, my daughter had turkeys in there we had pygmy goats in there um, We've had chicks in there, and we've had peacocks in there. So pretty much whatever we need to do goes in there. This uh, is also a 10 by 10 dog fence, but it's got some chicken wire around the bottom because of uh, you know chicks and uh, small peacocks. We don't want them getting out of the, the um, chain link. So we do that, and you can see here it also has the uh, pool wall underneath it to keep things from digging underneath. With the sheep in there right now, there's no reason to uh, worry about putting a 4x4 across the front. We do still have one down the side. We just took our round pen, since we weren't really not working the horses with it at all, put it out here in the yard, attached it to the fence here and around the other corner, and stuck the sheep back here for now. We've got one there, one there, one there, and I'm assuming one on the other side of the round bale. Yep, there's a little one. We just drop a round bale over there for them and uh, give them food every day and their water there. So that's our two outbuildings. Uh, once we get rid of these sheep, this will be just a whatever building again if we ever need it for something else. And again, the chicken coop. You can kind of see it's how it's built up off the ground and uh, where the dog fence doesn't go, we've got heavier, heavier wire fence closing up the holes. And out here on this end, we've got, got chicken wire closing up this gap. So let's uh, fire the tractor up and go dump this in the garden. Okay, before I actually start the tractor up and start moving here, any of you other homestead channels that do tractor videos, you can put down in the comments below what you use for a tractor mount for your camera. I'd really appreciate it. I've tried a couple different mounts, and it seems like this tractor vibrates too much, so it just sits there and hums. Um, I'd like to be able to mount the camera up here on the roll bar or maybe down here on the side or something so it'd be easier to, to do this without holding the camera while I drive. So if there's any suggestions for camera mounts and how you do it, I'd really appreciate that down in the comments. So let's get this thing fired up and go dump this chicken waste. <laughs> with this tractor and the loaded tires, it feels like it holds the ground a lot better than it used to. It's got that whole load of chicken waste up there and no implement on the back. And it's not tipping around at all, it's good and steady. You can kind of see a couple of the peacocks running through the yard there. We've got a couple of them over here. Over there in front of the garage, that's two of the, they were babies a while back, the white one and the pied one. They, uh, they don't come out of the garage as often and they don't seem to hang with the other peacocks as much as the other ones hang together. 
but they're outside getting some sun today. We do have some a previous video of them in that blue building when we first got them. I'll try and make that up in the corner. Through the boys there, you can see they're starting to regrow their tails the next spring for mating. Much we use the tractor, all the tractor tire marks here, and where the ground is soft. Hope the sun doesn't bother you. I'm kind of heading into it. I've already opened the gate on the garden. I'd like to get in here and run the rototiller, but it's still a little, little too wet. Just get this into the garden. Start rototiller on here and get that work into the ground. We need to pull all our raised beds out. I'm not sure if we're going to reuse those next year or not. They weren't the greatest thing in the world. We did have the sheep out here for a while. Try and eat the garden down. We did a half decent job because the weeds did get away from us. You can see a few spots there where the weeds are still sticking up pretty high. They didn't eat down, but we did a pretty good job eating it down, and of course we've got sheep droppings all through here, which will help fertilize the garden next year as well. Also a lot of, a lot of sheep droppings out here in this yard section. We've got a water spigot right there. We're probably going to put a, uh, a frost tree in somewhere in this area, and in the spring hopefully we can build our greenhouse right here in this area somewhere. So that'll be a video to look for in the spring. Run this back to the garage. that we put this fence up mainly to keep the dogs out of the garden. Sakim is able to just jump right over it, but he hasn't done that in a long time. It's also worked really well last year. We didn't have a groundhog or, or any kind of pests at all in the garden. So taking the time to put this fence up around was a, was a really good idea. how wet it is, how soft the ground is. Got the horses out there. So there's Mercury. Got a koi over at the round bale feeder. Old blind Sam over there. They've got uh, three bowls. Koi's bowl is on the other side of this post right here. 
and the boy or uh, Mercury's bowled right behind this post, and Sam's is kind of out that way. Uh, we do supplement them every morning with a little bit of grain, trying to keep some weight on Sam. As old as he is, he is he's kind of sinking in at the hips a little bit, so we try and uh, try and keep up with that so he doesn't lose too much weight. Of course, there's their water. There's their water source. We got that frost tree right there beside the garage. One of our potential projects next spring, we might dig this dig this area out here in front of the garage because it's always so wet and muddy. Dig this down, put some geotextile in, some base and some gravel, and make this a gravel area out here in front of the garage. It's just uh, it's just a muddy muddy mess. chips we use for the uh, chicken coop. Take the hydraulic pressure off, put it in neutral, oh, and we're just crammed up close to the four-wheeler. This will go around the tractor. Close the big door. Grab our eggs. We only had uh, three eggs this morning, plus a broken one that I gave Sakima already. Turn all the lights off, and we'll head back to the house. Well, the uh, cleaning the chicken coop video turned out to be a mini homestead tour instead. You got to see the peacocks and the horses, our garden, our other building, the sheep. So I hope you enjoyed the little tour. Again, it's January 1st, 2020. Please subscribe to our channel. If you like our videos, we appreciate a thumbs up. If you shop at Amazon, which we know we all do, please use our Amazon link. It doesn't cost you a cent more, but it does help our channel out a little bit. Again, thanks for watching, and you have a wonderful day.